Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yisli amri wa hlul uqadatan min lisani yaqahum qawli Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amtha alayya wa ala walidayhi wa an a'mala salihan tadzah wa aslih li fi dhuriyati inni tubatu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'ah wa rizqan tayyibah wa amalan salihan mutakabbala ya Rabbil Alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, if you noticed in the first raka'ah, what surah did I read? Surah Nuh. Second raka'ah, I read the first seven ayahs of which surah? Surah Al Mudathir. Uh, alhamdulillah, we had a group of brothers that came from Jamaat from all across the world, from Australia. You can imagine of all places how far Australia is. They came all the way with one mission in mind, and that is. Uh, I have a question for you all. I don't know anything about, I haven't studied much of medicine. Okay, maybe, maybe science courses that I took growing up. Aside from that, am I, can I go and do open heart surgery on you, inshallah? No, 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 please no. <laughs> maybe maybe the, the, the heart of the soul, yeah, I mean, but can I do open heart surgery on you? No. Dr. Junaid, I know, mashallah, you're very, you know, half of Quran, mashallah, you have this, that, you're a ne- ne- neurologist. Yes. Can we trust him with the AC of the masjid? No. Sorry, I can't, we cannot trust you with this. <laughs> it requires what? Ilm. The same thing for da'wah. If you want to know the adab and the etiquettes of the person who calls to Allah Azza wa Jal, these two surahs has to be always on your mind. Surah Nuh and Surah Mudathir. These two surahs talk about the etiquette of a person who does da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Nuh talks about all of the different ways Nuh alayhi salam did da'wah. How much emotion subhanAllah he put. Laylan wa nahara ya Allah I called them. All night, all day. Jihara wa asrartu lahum israra. And also, if you notice in Surah Nuh there's a lot of emphasis on istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allah, astaghfirullah, and, call, uh, and doing da'wah to Allah, uh, du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the da'i, he needs to have, of course, patience. He needs to have, of course, the special du'as that he does. And he needs to do lots of istighfar, istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. This is the qualities of a who? Of a da'iya. Okay, of a person who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And same thing, Surah Al-Mudathir is preparing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed divine guidance and revelation to know how to give da'wah, then what about me and you? If Allah is teaching, Allah Azza wa Jalla is teaching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, who's muddathir over here? Rasulullah sallam, the one that is covered with divine wahi. Qum fa'anzir, wa rabbak fa'kabbir, wa thiyabak fa'tahir, wa rujaz fa'hjub, wa la tamnud ta'stakthir, wa li rabbik fa'smir. All seven eyes, all adab, 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 adab. This is the qualities of a da'iyah. So I, I, was, I wish that the, all the brothers were here. This would have been a very beneficial reminder that the one who calls to Allah Azza wa Jal, these two surahs has to be on his mind. Surah Al-Mudathir and Surah Nuh. Subhanallah. Um, we're going over, of course, the book of Shaykh Abdullah Siraj al-Din. Shaykh Abdullah Siraj al-Din is the teacher of my teachers. Shaykh Abdullah Siraj al-Din was a muhaddith. He was a mufassid. He was a faqih. Hanafi and Shafi'i, you scholar, subhanAllah. What can we say about Shaykh Abdullah Siraj? Uh, you know, from the adab and from the, you know, what a student of knowledge does is that, of course, he always prays for his teachers. And a part of the righteousness, or you could say, you know, loyalty towards his teacher and his teacher's teachers is that he prays for them. So before we begin the dars, I want everyone to recite Surah Al Fatiha for Shaykh Abdullah Siraj. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rahmanir Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين آمين 
قوي سورة الفاتحة سورة الفاتحة is سورة المناجاة سورة الفاتحة is basically a dua so always after you finish سورة الفاتحة what do you say? is this only in salah? no everywhere even when we did the khatm al-Quran I forgot to say amin but you're supposed to always after سورة الفاتحة say amin this is the sunnah or this is what you should do after سورة الفاتحة because this is a dua uh, going to the book of Shaykh Abdullah Siraj al-Din, alhamdulillah, which is all a hadith, uh, based on a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, related to the Qur'an, okay? So we covered two lessons so far, and now we're continuing on from where we left off. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi, once, this is narrated in Sahih Muslim, he came out whilst the Sahaba were in the Sufa, you know, Ahlul Sufa, where the poor Sahaba, they lived. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to them, which one of you would like to go every day to Butthar or Atiq and bring their two different valleys and bring back two large humped camels? Who lived, uh, who, lived who, were, who, who used to sit in the Sufa area? The poor Sahaba. So he, again, he's talking to the poor Sahaba. So you can imagine even the, they have even more desire for it. Okay? He said, which one of you would like to go every day to this valley or these two valleys and bring back each time two large humped camels? This is a lot of wealth. MashaAllah, you're bringing back every Honda Civic. Two Honda Civics. <laughs> uh, without incurring any sin or breaking ties of kinship. Why did Rasulullah mention this? Without incurring any sin or breaking ties of kinship. Because they're getting all this profit without any sin and they're not breaking any ties. Usually the people that get into business, what ends up happening? They're breaking ties and they're incurring sin. You know, they say in the dictionaries, a tujjal businessman, ala wazan fujjal. They say this in the dictionaries, a tujjal ala wazan fujjal. The tujjal, the word for businessman, is on the pattern of fujjal, the t- people who transgress and sin. It's just the thing that they mention. Because a lot of people, a lot of people that are involved in business, sadly, they end up having to do, they have some haram it's always leaking in there. It's sad, it's very sad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all halal in this. Uh, so that's why he's saying without incurring any sin, يعني, this is going to be pure halal wealth. They all said, of course, yeah. We said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, 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 all of us would like that. Of course, all of us, Ya Rasulullah, would like this. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallu He said, can any of you not go to the masjid and learn or read two verses of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal? Can you not go to the masjid and learn two ayahs? The Sahaba, the, you know, of course, they didn't respond yet. The Prophet he said, Can you not go to the masjid and learn two verses of the Quran? That is better than two camels. Three ayahs is better than three camels. And four verses is better than four camels. SubhanAllah. Learning one ayah of Quran is better than a one Honda Civic. Okay? Two, two, uh, two ayahs is better than two cars. Three ayahs is better than three cars. Four ayahs is better than four cars. Wallahi, if I told you right now. That mashallah at the Honda dealership, they're giving out cars for free. Wallahi, all of you would leave this jalsa right now. You wouldn't even think about it. I know you guys would. I would too. Stop the <laughs> huh, You would too, right? Taban. The masjid is open. Every day we have a Quran halaqa. We have a tafsir halaqa. Even right now, we just did some you know, re- revision of some of the ayat of Surah Nuh and Surah Mudatid. But who comes to these? The Prophet here is fixing our mindset. Learning one verse of Qur'an is more valuable to you as a Muslim than one whole camel, subhanAllah. This is the virtue of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from Ahlul Qur'an. The next hadith that the Shaykh mentions, and you all know this hadith, but it's good to mention, the example of a believer who recites the Qur'an is like the example of a specific fruit that he mentions, like a citron. Its scent is pleasant and its taste is pleasant. Okay, and then the example of a believer who does not recite the Qur'an is like a date. Does it have a scent? No. But does it taste good? Yes. It tastes sweet. The example of the hypocrite, the munafiq who recites the Quran, is like basil. I don't know. Uh, another example. It, it smells good, but it tastes bitter. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have a good taste. And the example of the hypocrite, the munafiq who does not read the Quran, is the example of uh, alhamdulillah. I think that's the, the word for it. I don't even know what it is in English. It has no scent, and its taste is bitter. Okay? So... Two examples of a believer, two examples of a munafiq. The believer who is, uh, who reads the Qur'an and does amal with the Qur'an, his insides are good, meaning what he, his belief system, his akhlaq inside are good, and also he gets to benefit people because he recites Qur'an. He's a person 
that can benefit others. The example of a believer who does amal with the Qur'an. He does amal with the Qur'an, but he does not recite it. His taste is still good. The believer is still good. He's like a date. He's still sweet. MashaAllah, you talk to him, you see the, you know, he, he's living like a Muslim. But you cannot smell the fragrance of it because he's not someone of Qur'an. So we should all be people of Qur'an. And then the munafiq who recites the Qur'an, you think, oh, this person is so good, so good. MashaAllah, he's reading like Qari Abdul Basit. Ooh, but then inside is Qurban. And then the example of the Munafiq, who is fake, of course, and he doesn't read Quran, his insides are bad and his outsides are bad. So this is the example that the Prophet drew. May Allah make us from the first category. That our, our insides are sweet and our outsides are also sweet. Yeah. Say Amin. The next hadith the Prophet sallallahu this hadith is so beautiful. Man qara al Quran wa amila bihi. Oh no. This one? No. In the Hadi Kulub, Tasdau, Kama Yasda Ul Hadi, the Asaba Hulma, Pilia, Sulla, Majla, who had called a Kathra to Vikri Mout with Tilawa to Quran. Allah, Allah. Salu Ali. The Prophet he said, The hearts rust. The hearts, they rust just like iron rusts when water touches it. I'm sure you guys have nail cutters, right? When you leave it in this, next to the sink, what happens after a while? It starts to rust. Similarly, the heart. You leave it like that, what happens to it? It starts to rust, just like iron and just like all of that. Then he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, how do we fix that? What is the polish for that? How do we remove this, uh, this rust on the heart? Rasulullah he said, remembering death often and reciting the Qur'an. This is the ilaj, this is the cure. You want to remove the, death, the, the rust of your heart? Remember death often. Remind yourself that this life is short, that this dunya is short. You're only here for a short period of time. This dunya, yesterday you were a child, today you are, you are, you are an elderly man. This is the dunya. Everyone comes and passes, remembering death often, it cleans up the heart, and reading the Qur'an, reading Kalamullah Azza wa Jalla. Allahumma ja'ala min ahl Qur'an. Subhanallah. The next hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallu Alayhi, he said, Allah Allah, man qarra al-Qur'an wa amila bihi, albasahu Allahu, albasa Allahu walidayhi tajan, yawm al-qiyamah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith, whoever recites the Qur'an and acts upon it, Allah will crown their parents with a crown whose light is more radiant than the sun. Allah, Allah. This is the honor of who? The parents of the, per of the child who memorized the Qur'an. May Allah make us hufal and make our children hufal. Really, I promise you, if you have several children, please, please make one of them in the path of Allah. If you have four or five children, at least one of them should be dedicated in the path of Allah. Make him a hafil of Qur'an. Make him someone that is specific to the khidmah of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. That one child will be the candle and the light for the rest of the family. He will be the one t telling them how to pray salah, how to do zakah, how to do this, how to do that. You have to have a candle in every family. You have to have one nur at least in each family. This is my advice to all of you. This is the advice that all shuyuk give. If you have several children, make one of them. Go on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many children did uh, the wife of Imran have? He had who? Maryam. Maryam. <laughs> ya Allah, give me one child, Ya Allah. I put him in your path. We have five, six, we don't put him in the path of Allah. Ishada. We have five, six, we don't put them in the path of Allah. This is, this is not good. Okay? So we should try our best to invest our children into the path of Allah. So memorizing the Quran. Or, or, or some sort of way of connecting them to the deen of Allah Azza wa Not everyone has to be hafal, okay? Not everyone has to be a memorizer of the Qur'an. Did, did, were all the Sahaba memorizers of the Qur'an? No. But look at how connected they were to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. How, how strong of a hold that they had to Islam, okay? So connect them to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal in service in any way, at least one of your children. So the person, the parent, he's going to have a crown, and she's going to have a crown, the mother whose light is more radiant than the sun's. And then the son, were it in one of the houses of this world. So what do you think about the one who acted upon it? If this is the reward of the parent, what do you think is the reward of the hafiz? Allah gave such a reward for the parent, and he didn't mention anything for the hafiz. Your reward is unimaginable, subhanAllah. Every verse you've read in the Qur'an, Allah says, Yalla, folk, folk, read more, read more, we'll give you more station. SubhanAllah, can you imagine? And also, you know, by the way, something I heard recently that, and this is encouragement for those that, need, that want to learn the qira'at. Each qira'ah that you add, 
is more stations that you can rise up. So the half of the Quran who knows Hafs, he's gonna go here. The one who knows Mashallah, Astaghfirullah, I'm I'm nobody. But the one who has the Qiraat on top of it, boom, boom, boom. He's reading more and more and more and more. SubhanAllah. This is the virtue of the people of Quran. Imam Shatabi he says, Hani and Mari and Walida ka alihima malabi su and wal mina taji wal hula fama wanukum bin najli in the jazaihi ulaika ahlullah. Who are the people of Quran? Ahlullah. What does Allah call them? What does the Muslims say that they are? Who are the people of Quran? Ahlullah. The people of Allah. What greater status do you want? Was Safa to Imana. The line of Imam Shatabi subhanAllah. The next hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says uh, in a hadith, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ أَقْرَأُهُمْ وَأَفْقَهُمْ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ The best people are those that are most well versed in the Qur'an, not just in recitation, but also in amal, in tafsir, in understanding deeply the, the Qur'an, most knowledgeable regarding Allah's religion, most conscious of Allah, foremost in commanding the good, they are people that command the good and they forbid the evil, and in maintaining ties of kinship. SubhanAllah, these are the best people in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah maj'ala minhum. The Prophet he says in another hadith, he said, who leads the person and who leads the people in prayer? Imam. Imam, of course. But who? What's the quality? Who uh, the most Quran? The one who is the most well-versed, the one who has the most knowledge of the Quran. People sometimes understand this as the reciters. This does not mean the reciters. It means the scholars. It means أَقْرَأُهُمْ لِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ The Qurra of the time of the Sahaba, were they just reciters? No, they were scholars. When you refer to the Qurra of the Sahaba, you're not referring to people who just recited Qur'an, but you're referring to people who recited and understood it. These are the people that are given the utmost preference in leading the Salah. This is another hadith. The people will be led in prayer by the most well-versed among them in the Qur'an. If they equal with respect to the Qur'an, mashallah, he's half of and he's half of he's steady, he's steady. Then the most knowledgeable of them regarding the sunnah. Who's more knowledgeable? With hadith of Rasulullah Who studied more? Who read more? If they are equal, then the first of them to do hijrah. This is in the time of the Sahaba. If they are equal, then the eldest. If they are equal, uh, a person should not be led in prayer in his own house. Let's say, Dr. Jahul Islam, you invited me to your house for dinner. And you are the amir of the house. You, who has the authority, me or him to lead? He does. It's his house. Okay? You, a person should not be led in prayer in his own house or where he holds authority. Who holds authority in this masjid? The stationed, the positioned imam. This is, this is deen Allah Azza wa The imam al ratib The one who, not just me, I'm saying any masjid, who is, the, who is the one who is given preference to lead? Imam. The imam, this is where he holds authority. An imam al ratib right? So nobody can just come and say, I want to lead salah. Ah, la, la. We have a position imam, a station imam. He is the one who is supposed to lead. Similarly, if someone goes to anybody's house, who has the authority to lead salah? The host, the owner of the house. Except if he says, Yalla, please lead me. That's the, that's, that's the only case. Uh, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, and, and nor should anyone sit in his house, in his special seat, except with his permission. MashaAllah, don't go and find the best seat of the house and then you sit there. La, la, la. <laughs> the host always has his own seat, you know? So uh, leave that seat for him. Sit where the host wants you to sit. Because perhaps if you sit somewhere else, maybe his family is walking back, forth, back and forth, and you might see things that you should not be seeing. So the host is telling you, sit here, because there's wisdom behind it. Again, from the adab that the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us. Uh, another, subhanAllah, beautiful narration. When the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they passed away in Uhud, when they were burying the Sahaba, who was given preference in terms of burial? Who was buried first? No. No. The people who had the most Qur'an were buried first. The Sahaba that had the most Qur'an were buried first. This was the virtue of the person of Qur'an. That even on the, on the battle of Uhud, when there were Sahaba that were martyred, the people that were given preference to be buried first were the... People who had the more Qur'an memorized and more Qur'an to heart. SubhanAllah, it just shows you again, so many instances where the people of Qur'an are put on this high pedestal and high station in Deen Allah Azza wa Jal. And also narrations, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he narrates 
that it was the Qur'an reciters, the Qur'a, the scholars, the Qur'an, the people of the Qur'an, who would sit in the gatherings of Umar radiallahu an when he was Khalifa and would be in his council. Who would be in the council of the Khalifa? The people of the Qur'an. The people of the Qur'an, whether they were young or old, the people of Qur'an were in the council of the Khalifa, Umar radiallahu an, Amir al-Mu'mineen. The next uh, chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا Finish it. مِنْ تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ Okay. Whoever honors the symbols of Allah, شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ It is certainly out of piety of the heart. When the scholars explain this, they say, this includes uh, symbols of his religion and it includes those that bear his sacred law and who bear the tradition. It also includes Quranic masahif, it includes the masajid, it includes hajj rites and other things. Sha'ir Allah, broad. Symbols of Allah, things that remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal, or should remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. This includes the bearers of Islam, the scholars, and the Qurra. Imam al Nawawi, Imam al Nawawi radiallahu an, wa rahimahu, the great Imam, the author of Yad Sahih, and many other books, Al Athkaw, he used this ayah to prove. That you have to honor the people of the Quran. The one who, the one who you know, uh, uh, honors the symbols of Allah. This includes the scholar. This includes the one who is a person of Quran. Imam al we used this ayah as proof of that. And then he mentioned also in, in there. I think it's adab fi at tibyan fi adabi hamlat Quran. Wallahu alam. It is not permissible to harm them, the people of Qur'an, the people of knowledge, to look down upon them or belittle them. When you look down upon a person with Qur'an, when you look down upon a person who Allah gives knowledge, this is, this is tawfiq min Allah Azza wa Jal. What are you in essence doing? It's pregnant. No, no, what are, what are you doing? When you look down upon someone who bears the tradition of Islam, what are you doing in essence? Same. No, you know like in Daisy they say, oh, ito bas mulwi hai. What do you do when you do that? When you, when you look down upon the people who carry the tradition of Islam, it's as though you're looking down on Islam. Because these are the flagships, these are the people that are carrying Quran and Sunnah. So, for example, in Desi culture specifically, I'm talking about that because I'm Desi, they always look at the Maulwi and say, oh, he's Maulwi. You know, he's Maulwi. Oh, you're Maulwi. Maulwi. They look at it as a t- title that's down. Astaghfirullah. But rather, in Islam, we're taught to look at them with such high pedigree and so much ihtiram. And so it's, we're not, it's not allowed to look down upon them, to belittle them, and to harm them. Imam al nawi he reported, there's a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Azza wa Jalla, I think. It's a hadith Qudsi. He said, Man aada li waliyan, yes, yeah, hadith Qudsi. Man aada li waliyan, faqad aadantuhu bil harb. Whoever takes a friend of mine, a wali of mine as an enemy, then I declare war against them. The one, who decla- uh, the one who goes and takes my wali as an enemy, I have declared war against them. <laughs> Imam al nawi he reports this from Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam al-Shafi'i, radiallahu anhum jami'an. He said, if the scholars are not the awliya of Allah azza wa jal, then Allah has no awliya. If the scholars are not the awliya of Allah azza wa jal, then Allah has no awliya. So again, Imam al nawi all of these scholars read Re-establishing the fact that the people closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are of course those that have the most knowledge of Him and do amal with Him, not just ilm. Everyone can speak, but ilm with amal as well, subhanAllah. May Allah make us from them, Ya Rabbi. Uh, the next chapter where Imam al nawi he then mentions, I'll, I'll skip a part of it, uh, a hadith in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, إِنَّ مِنْ إِجْلَالِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ إِكْرَامَ ذِي الشَّيْبَةِ الْمُسْلِمِ وَحَامِلِ الْقُرْآنِ غَيْرِ الظَّالِفِ وَالْجَافِ عَنْهُ وَإِكْرَامَ ذِي السُّلْطَانِ الْمُقْسِطِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said, part of exalting and honoring and glorifying Allah azza wa jal is to honor the elderly Muslim. Part of honoring Allah is honoring the elderly Muslim. Meaning that if you have someone that is older than you, if you truly honor Allah azza wa jal, then you will honor his creation. You will honor this, this older man. Respecting them, honoring them, giving them preference. This is from Islam. And also, وَحَامِلِ Quran, And to honor the person that has, given the, that has been given the Qur'an. غَيْرُ الْغَالِفِ وَالْجَافِ عَنْهُ Means that the person who isn't extreme and the one who isn't neglectful either. The one that, you know, he becomes super extreme with his ideas and this, this, that. 
not that person of Quran, and not the one who just he memorized the Quran, doesn't pray, doesn't do this, doesn't do that. No, no, the one who ilm with amal, Quran with amal. May Allah make us from them. And the last one, a person of authority who is just. Last hadith, and we'll stop here. Bi dinahi taala. There are three people who will never be frightened by the supreme horror, which is called al fazaul akbar, the supreme horror, which is what day of judgment. Nor will be will they be taken to account, and they will be on mounds of musk until the whole creation has been reckoned. They are the three people, the three categories: a person who learned the Quran for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, and led people in prayer whilst they were pleased with Him. Ya Allah, Allah majalla minhum. Say Amin. A person, a caller to prayer, the muazzin, who calls towards the prayer. For the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah maj'ala minhu. Imam Abu Hanifa, he was the Imam of Salah and he was also the Mu'adhin. The Mu'adhin has a high status as well. The next, the highest next will be who? Mu'adhin. The Mu'adhin on the Day of Judgment. And the last one, a slave who is excellent in his conduct with his Lord and in his conduct with his masters. That is of course in that time, but even it could be applied, let's say, for someone who, if you're under uh, the authority of someone, that you're also good to those people that are over you and above you. So a person who is good with Allah Azza wa and the uh, and good to those that are, uh, in essence, his leader or her leader. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make us from people of Quran. Allahumma jalla min ahl Quran, min ahl Allah wa khasati. Allahumma jalla, Allahumma zukna bi kulli harf min al Quran halawa, wa bi kulli kalima karama, wa bi kulli ayah saada, wa bi kulli juz in jazaa. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ma'in. Any questions about the dars we took? Yes, yes. Of course, there's so many ahadith, so many ayat. وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِي جَنَّةً The one who goes against the jama'ah, the one, يَدُوا اللَّهِ عَلَى الْجَمَاعَةً مَنْ شَدَّ شَدَّ فِي النَّارِ Whoever goes against the large corpus of scholars and goes against the jama'ah of Muslims and goes against the jama'ah of scholarly consensus, then they are leading themselves to a pathway that, na'udhu billah, could perhaps lead to hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us always with the jama'ah, to keep us always connected, our hearts connected. And uh, yes. So, what if actually they make that uh, couple of groups and fighting each other, then which group we are going to fight? Ya Allah. It's not easy. It's very hard, I know. Yeah, right now the situation is not black and white. You know, you know there's a hadith of Prophet there will come a time, will be this, 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 that. And you take yourself, take your family, go to the mountains. Rayyah nafsak, i'tizal. Just do your ibadah, read your Quran, learn deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't get into the this and that and this and that. In Quran and Sunnah. Quran and Sunnah. And bin nawajid. Stick to Quran and Sunnah like you're like you're biting on it with your molar teeth. Ma abadan. Don't leave Quran and Sunnah. See, some people are just Quran, Quran. No, Quran with Sunnah because Sunnah explains Quran. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه How do we know anything except with him?